like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present this work here. This is a joint work with Mark Mars. And so the main aim of this talk is to analyze under which conditions two space times can be matched so that the result in space time contains an R shell. Um, so let me start with a brief introduction of the geometrical objects. We need to develop the matching formalism. So let sigma be an n-dimensional manifold endowed with a two-symmetric covariant tensor gamma, a one-form L, and a scalar function L2. And let me define a coordinate system, lambda y super a, on, uh, around a point Q on sigma. An ambient tensor, which uh, is symmetric and encodes exactly the same information as, as uh, gamma, L, and L2. So there exists a formalism to describe general hypersurface that are embedded on an ambient manifold um, from a complete abstract viewpoint. And uh, this formalism is based on the concept of metric hypersurface data and hypersurface data. So L2 metric hypersurface data provided that the uh, tensor A is not degenerate everywhere in sigma. And the five tuples sigma, gamma, L, L2, and Y so how do we connect these uh, concepts with the geometry of embedded hypersurfaces is via the embedded metric hypersurface data and embedded hypersurface data constants. So we will say that some metric hypersurface data is embedded in an M plus one dimensional manifold MG if there exists an embedding phi from an N dimensional submanifold. And there exists a rigging, which is an everywhere transversal vector field along omega. And the following G is going uh, to be the, the two symmetric tensor gamma. The pullback of the rigging flat is going to be the one for L. And the norm of the rigging is going to be L2. And uh, the, uh, some, met some hypersurface data is going to be embedded in MG. If, in addition, the Y tensor is given by the pullback of the lead derivative of the metric along the ring. So let MG be an M plus, M plus dimension. And from now on, we are going to restrict ourselves to the case in which uh, Omega is an embedded null hypersurface. So from now on, the first fundamental form of uh, gamma, of sigma, is going to be degenerate. So it is well known that given a null hypersurface, an embedded null hypersurface, there exists one only null direction and that the remaining directions are a spaceless null generator, which is an over zero vector field along the null direction of omega. And uh, let me say that these vectors are well known to be uh, necessarily geodesic, so which is the implementation here. We are going to assume the existence of a function S from omega to R such that um, any null generator applied to S gives a non-zero value everywhere in omega. And with this function, one uh, is allowed to define a space-like section as the subset of as, as the subsets of constant S and the tangent plane associated to each, sec each section, uh, which is the subset of the space-like vector fields such that applies to S gives zero. So the family of section S sub S def define a foliation of omega given by the subset of constant S. We are going to choose some basis um, on omega given by the vector fields k and v sub i. k is the null generator satisfying that k applied to s is equal to 1. And v are n minus 1 space-like vector fields such that um, it's, uh, in our case, our embedded null hypersurfaces are going to be boundaries, so they are going to be automatically two-sided. And hence, they will always admit a vector field which is everywhere transverse to omega. So, in addition, since uh, our hypersurface are null, we can always take L to be uh, null everywhere. And let me define any scalar functions as the scalar products of uh, this transverse vector. Uh, without lots of generality, we're going to take K and L as future from now on. And we are going to define some tensors on omega, which are the induced metric H on each, on each section. The second fundamental form A of the null generator K and two more tensors, theta super L and sigma sub L, which are, uh, theta is basically a generalization of the second fundamental form with respect to L. But in this case, we have chosen L to be non-orthogonal to the section. 
which uh, in many cases uh, turns out to be uh, this theta tensor is not a second fundamental form, but uh, and also it is not symmetric in, in general. Besides, and for the same reasons, sigma is a generalization of the torsion one form. So from now on, we are going to assume um, this, this previous setup for two space times, n plus and n minus, each of them with an embedded null hypersurface, null hypersurfaces, uh, the boundaries of these space times. Uh, there must exist two embeddings, phi plus and phi minus, and two abstract uh, manifolds, sigma plus and sigma minus. Besides, there must exist two rings, uh, xi plus and xi minus. So it is well known that given two space terms, uh, the matching between them is only possible when the so called junction conditions are satisfied. And these are a set of equalities providing information about the point to point identification between the boundaries and hence between the tangent spaces of omega plus and omega minus, and between the null tra uh, the transverse directions defined on omega plus and omega minus. Um, so the key point here is that these junction conditions actually impose that even the embeddings and the riggings, the metric hypersurface data when coming from the plus and the minus sized side must agree. So from now on, we are only considering one unique abstract manifold sigma and one unique metric hypersurface data. So as I have said, since we are interested in studying the point-to-point -point identification of the regions, since they basically uh, identify the, the transverse directions defined on, on, on the boundaries. The matching problem has, has been reduced to finding uh, an abstract manifold given to a space times and plus and a minus, the matching problem reduces to find an abstract manifold sigma such that there exists two surface data agree. So we can always choose sigma so that it is adapted to one of uh, our matching hypersurfaces and uh, it has to set in the you know, on one of the side the side. So let us say say we fix the, the form of the embedding and the ring on the minus side and we construct the embedding and the ring on the plus side. So let me define some new bases of the tangent plane of omega, given by this E sub 1, E sub A vector fields, which, which are going to be basically the push forward of the partial lambda, partial Y super A vector fields. And let me remark that coordinate is cooling down the, the generic direction of, of sigma. And let me use this definition to define um, metric hypersurface data so that the invariant phi minus is the identity map. So one of the first consequences of this uh, choice is that the coordinate lambda must uh, increase towards the future because k has, has been chosen future as well as l. So after imposing the junction conditions, one of the first consequences is that the E1 plus vector field mm, must be an null generator and hence it must be proportional to the null generator k plus. The remaining vector fields uh, tangent to omega plus will have a component in k plus and a component in v plus given by a and v and the region of course will have a component which is transverse and a tangent part uh, given by the components v and c super k we have written here one divided by a to emphasize that this coefficient cannot be zero otherwise the region uh, is tangent to omega plus so these are the um, shell junction conditions, um, and the key object, the key point here is that um, um, since the two space times uh, m plus and m minus are completely known, um, basically the last two equations uniquely determine the tangential part of the region, which are the components V R C, in terms of these functions a a basically fixes the form of the E one plus vector field. And this first equation um, entails the following. So let us imagine um, a section on omega minus. So uh, if we uh, think of the image of this uh, uh, section, which is a subset of points of omega, of omega plus, um, this condition actually establishes an identification because um, after the matching, the, the two readings must point towards the same side of the higher surface of the matching hypersurface, this uh, ends up imposing that the function A must be positive. And hence, the only possible matchings are A, for example, A with D here, and B with C. 
So the analysis of the shell matching conditions actually yields that um, uh, the functions a and h sub i can be written in terms uh, can be written as partial derivatives of a function capital H, while the v components can be expressed as partial derivatives of a set of functions a super k, which only depend on the spatial coordinates. So besides one uh, other consequence of the phase like vector field satisfy this relation is that the foliation definite function on the minus side can be uh, computed to be equal to lambda and the foliation defining function can be computed to be um, equal to this function h capital h so let me go to this picture here so if an another plus side uh, this fun this foliation definite functions is plus minus um, actually what is telling us is Given a point along the null generator, this function tells us uh, at what height the point is. Given these two results, um, we can call this h function a step function since it accounts for the um, the step along the null direction when crossing the matching. Uh, in fact, in the initial works by Penrose, the Minkowski space stem is cut um, across an null hyperplane, and then the two regions are reattached by imposing a shift along the null coordinator. Regions. So this shift is now recovered and generalized in the matching formalism. Besides, um, after the matching, uh, the rigging, uh, the rigging is moving on omega minus along the anal generator. We must move since, uh, because of the fact that E1 plus, as I have said, is an anal generator, we must move along an anal generator on the other side. So the map phi must be uh, actually a uh, diffeomorphism between the set of null generators of omega minus and the set of null generators of omega plus. So let me now recall the definitions of the y plus minus tensors, which were the pullbacks of uh, the lead derivative of the matrix along the riggings. And let me say that when the shell junction conditions are satisfied, the geometry of the shell is actually determined by the jump of these transverse tensors. And that is the reason why we introduced this new tensor V as the difference between them. And let me um, introduce the or define the energy momentum tensor of the shell in the null case, which is given by this part on uh, given by the metric hypersurface data and this part given by V. Um, so the components of the energy momentum tensor can be interpreted as the energy, the energy flux and the pressure. So the component tau 1, 1 uh, is essentially the energy density of the shell. Tau 1j is the energy flux, and tau aj uh, is basically the pressure of the cell. We have obtained uh, the explicit form of this uh, y plus minus tensors and the, the energy momentum tensor of the shell in terms of this step function, this diffeomorphism phi, and, the, and all the geometrical objects introduced in the first part of the talk. And I have shown here some of this expression, not all of them because of the because of the fact that they are way long. So these are, uh, for example, y minus one one, y minus y plus one one, and one component, which is the pressure um, of the energy momentum tension. So let me, in this uh, last part of the talk. Um, recover the results from uh, a specific cut and paste construction, namely the plane fronted impulsive wave, which was the first case uh, studied by Penrose. So the plane fronted impulsive wave exhibits the following metric here, which is basically the Minkowski metric plus this psi. Here u and v are null coordinates and the coordinate, uh, coordinates x are spatial coordinates. Um, the purely gravitational case is uh, recovered when this psi function is harmonic in the spatial coordinates. And um, Penrose addresses the uh, impulsive limit by uh, setting this distributional form of the metric, um, which has the Minkowski form uh, for a positive u and negative u, but this Dirac delta function on the hypersurface u equal to zero. So it turns out that there exists a coordinate transformation yielding a C0 form of the metric, and that this uh, coordinate transformation actually proves uh, the null coordinate V to be discontinuous uh, across the hypersurface U equal to zero. 
So what is happening here is that in order to preserve the Minkowski form of uh, for U positive U negative regions, um, we have chosen conti uh, discontinuous coordinates V U X, uh, and hence the 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 metric uh, becomes discontinuous. But choosing proper coordinates which are continuous, uh, despite losing the form uh, the Minkowski form on one of the sides. Um, uh, it uh, it turns out to be a zero metric. So in this in this first work by Penrose, uh, he proposed the jump v plus equal v minus plus h when crossing the matching hypersurface that can be obtained from this uh, transformation of coordinates. So let me recover these results by using the matching formalism. So we are going to consider two um, two space times and plus minus. Uh, each of them corresponding to uh, a Minkowski region, the U positive and U negative Minkowski regions, and hence with the following metrics here. And let me define uh, the foliation defining function as uh, as a function uh, as as v plus minus coordinates. Um, for uh, the basis of omega mass uh, omega plus minus, we are going to take partial no partial x uh, vector fields. And as transverse vector fields, we are going to take partial u plus minus vector fields. With these choices, the Pendle's jumps actually corresponds with this step function here, which has a part uh, linear in lambda and a part uh, linear in and this function h. And we can compute the y plus minus tensors and the energy momentum tensor of the shell which in this case are given by these expressions here, e, y minus is equal to zero, and y plus and the energy momentum tensor of the cell are, go are going to be given by um, the second derivative of the, uh, the step functions. The energy is the space-like derivatives of the stem function, and the energy flux is the cross uh, derivative, and this will be important later, the pressure is basically the second derivative uh, with respect to lambda of the function of the stack function h. So let me recover some or study some specific cases. So the first case will be the no-shell case, uh, which is achieved by imposing v equal to zero. And uh, in this case, um, uh, the step function that it is obtained is linear in lambda and in, in all the coordinates. So the corresponding step along the null direction defined by v is given by this formula here and inter it turns out that this um, step can be absorbed in the coordinates of the plus side via um, null rotation or, on, or a null translation. Um, so we are here recovering the isometries of the Minkowski space team and hence we are covering the whole Minkowski space team. The second case is the non-zero energy case, which uh, for which we have set the pressure and the energy flux to zero, and we have kept the energy completely free. So what it is obtained here is that the step function is actually given by a linear part in lambda, and this function h, and the energy is uh, lambda independent and also is given by this equation here. Um, this constant A can be set to 1 without loss of generality via a boost on the plus side. So here we are recovering the Penrose jump. Um, and hence we can conclude that the Penrose construction either describes purely gravitational waves when this energy is equal to zero, or um, shells of null dust. And to end up, let me consider a completely general shell in Minkowski space-time by taking a completely free energy momentum tensor. So in this case, the step function is going to be given by this expression here with alpha positive and P the pressure. And okay, let me call velocity to the rate of change of a foliation defining function along the null generator. And let me call acceleration to the rate of change of the velocity. So we have uh, built our null generator k plus minus um, so that the velocity with respect, with respect to uh, velocity along the foliation defining function is always equal to one, but um, the matching does not identify this k plus minus vector, but the e one plus minus vector. So 
what uh, ends up occurring is that um, the velocity when moving along an L generator on the minus side is always equal to one and the acceleration is always equal to zero. But on the omega plus hypersurface, the velocity um, is given by the um, uh, first derivative of, uh, with respect to lambda of the step function and the second derivative of the step function. So we can talk about self-compression or self-stretching and say that there exists self-compression when uh, the acceleration is uh, acceleration measured by lambda is uh, strictly negative. And of course, this if effect is going to be ruled by the pressure since it basically determines this the second derivative a of h. So we have observed that the positive pressure actually pushes its point toward lower values of the step function and hence toward lower lower values of the polyation dependent function S plus and vice versa. And in order to see this more explicitly, let me consider a lambda dependent pressure, which is given by this uh, formula here, where mu is uh, any regular function such that the first derivative is always positive and with uh, a proper limit when lambda tends to infinity. So the step function is given by mu and this alpha h function. And the behavior of the energy momentum tensor is uh, ruled by these three functions, mu, alpha, and h. And let me consider the explicit case in which mu takes this uh, specific form. So what it is observed here is that when the pressure, which is this line here, um, when the pressure becomes negligible, um, the, the step function exhibits a straight line behavior as occurred in the case of Penrose. But when the pressure starts increasing, the slope of the step function decreases and some compression of points is taking place until the uh, pressure again becomes negligible where the step function again takes uh, behaves like a straight line. And regarding the energy, which is this line here, what we observe it, is that the, the energy starts increasing when the compression of points on omega plus takes place. And it actually shows an accumulative behavior since it tends to a constant value, uh, which is achieved when the pressure again uh, becomes negligible. So all these facts, um, in our opinion, deserve further investigation. And this formulation, uh, we consider it interesting in the sense that it allows to create um, new uh, shells uh, by pasting any, any kind of uh, new spacings. So uh, thank you all for the attention.